These are British 18th century 24 pounder naval guns. You can tell that they're naval guns, partly because they have small wheels, which don't get in the way when you're trying to get to the gun from the side, but which are a bit rubbish on rough terrain, and partly because they have a loop at the back of the gun. This was for restraining the recoil of the gun when you had limited room. Thick rope would attach the gun to the wall in front of the weapon. That's not the touch, oh. I am French. It is called the 24 pounder naval gun for one purpose. It is not because the cannon weighs 24 pounds. If you think that these cannons weigh 24 pounds, I challenge all of you myself right now to go and try to lift these bloody things. I can assure you, you will not manage. The cannon actually weighs two tons, so that's equivalent to two cars. The pounder refers to the weight of an iron cannonball of that calibre. This one's a five and a half incher. We will fire 600 grams of black powder, which is still quite a bang, I can assure you. They also have here the world's last remaining eight inch field howitzer. So for a donation of 10 euro, you will get the only chance in the European Union, as a civilian, <laughs> as a civilian that is, to fire a cannon for yourself. Do we have any brave takers? Yep. Yeah. Number one, yeah. number two. <laughs> So the public came forward and were steeped in the ways of the British Army by being given smart uniforms. There's always one. Do you like being in the artillery? I've got a motto. Oh yes, what's that then? Always merry and bright. The first tool in the loading sequence is the worm, or wad screw. This was twisted to catch any remaining bits of bag, wadding or charge from the previous firing, bird's nests or whatever else might be fouling the barrel. Next, the sponge. Some fleece on a pole dipped in water to make absolutely sure that there's nothing in there that will ignite the charge prematurely. Safety first. Throughout all this, the Ventsman holds his thumb over the touch hole to prevent a through draft, which might fan some embers and cause an explosion during the loading process. He uses a leather oh! thumb stall so that he doesn't burn his skin on the hot metal. Next, a man runs to get the charge of powder in a silk bag, and no, it would not be a good idea to keep these closer to the gun. Copper, to prevent sparks, pricker, puts a hole in the bag. Fuse! Man! Ready! Now a quick match is being inserted. Quills filled with gunpowder were sometimes used for this job. Other media for detonation existed, such as the flintlock, the percussion primer, and the friction tube. Strike the spark by yanking a roughened wire out of this, which was filled with antimony sulphide and potassium chlorate. To light the quick match, a slow match is used. He's lighting it from a simple lantern, a candle in a box. A slow match was a rope soaked in potassium nitrate wrapped around a forked stick called a linstock. Number four, please. Now the training of the gunner commences. It can take years for a recruit to master all the nuances of firing a cannon. The perfection of posture, the special diet, the idea of not leaning over the vent. And, oh, he's trained. Fire! Now for the moment, the fearsome detonation that will strike terror and ironmongery into the enemy. Any minute now. Oh, I can't stand the suspense. I suppose I could use this time to talk about his shorts. They're a very nice colour. Very polite. They're not beige. Earplugs out. This video cannot give you any impression of how loud these things are. You can see the path of the quick match here. And that's where it landed. That uh, was rubbish. You didn't even show them put the ball in. No, that's right. We skipped the stage of putting the actual projectile in, which would be rammed in with wadding of old rope either side of it to stop it rolling out and to make a better gas seal. 
Another tool we skipped was this giant loo brush, which would be used every now and again to clean out the build-up of soot and charred wadding in the barrel after a lot of shooting. It's still rubbish. You think it's all done by three men? Yes, all right. I've been showing you three men doing all the crewing, but five was more common. And in the field, once you add in commanders, all the men to move the cannon, fetch and carry things for it, and stand around protecting it, it might be as many as twelve. A drilled crew could get off one shot every ninety seconds, or a minute and a half on a bad day. It's still rubbish. I suppose it did all look a bit tame in parade ground. So, let's see that again, only this time re-edited in... Excitorama! Load the cannon! We're going for one more shot! You are good! Boss, get to the cannon! Is it done? Safe enough to go! Get on with it! Make it quick! Don't be honest! Just go! There's the hot coffee boy! Over here! 